from the Dawn of Dirt issue collection book from the end of 2017 called The Light in the Sky. And like how I was talking about how seeing the the corona made me think of the cornea because you'd see all the little solar flares and dances and you could see that on this photo, which is just mind blowing. Um, but I will share a few with you. I think I'm going to, I've got some marked, I'm going to say them in reverse order. This one is called The Verge on Meditation. I always thought of it as my beach. I knew it was a public place, but Naples Pier off the Gulf of Mexico was a place that was like my own special retreat ever since I was a little kid. You have to go just one block north of the pier and dig into the sand to find the coquina shells. These shellfish would be burrowing their way into the sand. Find the spirals on the shells, drop it into the water between the waves and watch its ever-growing ripples and circles near your feet. I don't know why I'm claiming ownership to this public beach, but when I search for moments to escape, I choose to verge on meditation by imagining myself on this beach at dusk when the reds and oranges of our circular sun change the water from blue to black with its beautiful breeze and the eternal downs, the downs with circular microscopic grains of sand massaging my feet with each step. This is the closest thing to coming to peace and coming full circle to reach anything I've ever needed. All at a beach I claim to call my own. Well, it makes me feel this good. And if it makes me feel this good, it does become mine and it makes the circle complete. I'm going to skip those. I'm just going to find a couple going backwards, which means I'm going to fold this one because I'm not reading them. Okay, so it like this one is from a show. It's called Salesman. The doorbell rang. Who could be stopping at this hour, I thought, but I put on my work down and I walked to the door. A man in a plaid suit stood at the entranceway with a worn book in his hand. His business suit seems like a costume that looked comical on the sad clown. I almost expected to see a twirling bow tie or water to squirt up a big flower in his pocket. But he flashed me a tired, business-like smile. It almost seemed genuine. And he rambled on and on about, well, I don't really know what he said. I, I don't even know what he wanted. What is he selling, I thought, as my head became dizzy with his confusing words. Try to be nice to the strange man. He knocked on your door and you felt obliged to greet him. It all seemed like nonsense. You stared, you tried to listen to his words, and, and you tried to make sense of his nouns and his verbs, and when you heard fractions, he mentioned a call to action. I, I didn't like what I heard, but I, I tried to listen. I, I wanted to listen. But after a while, I had to hold on to the door frame. I had to keep myself steady while this man's thoughts tried to knock me down. I finally stopped him. What are you trying to sell me? What are you trying to do? I asked. And the man looked at me and said, I'm trying to sell you an ideology. I'm trying to poison your mind. I slammed the door in his face. Alone, I let go of the door frame. I fell down. <laughs> When I did that in the show, I actually fell. That is surprising. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, if you if you want to take the time, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I won't bore this. That will bother you. I'm just gonna end with a happy one, and we can end this off early. No, I'm just trying to. Think. This is a piece called "Just by Holding His Hand." I'm a Chicagoan, and. I ran a poetry open mic and I went back there to visit and ran the poetry open mic that I used to run while I was there and featured there. And this was the last poem that I did in that show because I knew that they would like it, I thought. This is called Just By Holding His Hand. 
When we're walking down the street in stride, and our feet pump out the same rhythm, and our shoulders are almost touching, and our hands seem to brush up against and along each other for one brief moment. In that one brief moment, our hands almost touch, and he reaches over and takes my hand. He slides his fingers around my hand, and I feel him move along my palm to my fingers. When he moves along my palm to my fingers, no one knows what it feels like then, when his fingers curl and hold me tight. Well, they feel like pop rocks. You know what it feels like pop rocks, and that candy is sliding down your throat after you let it explode on your tongue, and it's tingling. Oh, you know the feeling. And no one else is eating those pop rocks, and no one knows that tingling feeling, and this is my little secret. And I love keeping this little secret, and I feel this feeling like never before, and it makes me want to laugh and cry, because when I look around the room, no one in the room is eating those pop rocks, and no one knows the feeling when he's holding my hand. No one knows the feeling when he's holding my hand. It's like candy and cupids and hearts and sunshine and all those generic symbols of love that never explain it just right. Words can never explain it just right. It's like catching your breath and falling from an airplane. It's climbing a mountain. It's standing on a glacier. It's following dolphins. It's swimming with sharks. It's sitting and turning your head and seeing those fingers interlocked with yours when you're walking in stride. Because then and there, walking in stride, you think of those pop rocks tingling down your throat. But now this feeling is, it's all of your nerves because Pop Rocks never felt like this. Now nothing has ever felt like this. And it's in all your muscles and all of your nerves. And now you want to hold on for your life. And now you feel something you've never felt before. All just by holding his hand. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, so, wow. Yay. Uh, Scarce Publications books, I can show those things <laughs> off. So, yes, as the letter just said, these books are out every month. And you can submit stuff and whatnot. And I